In this video, we're going to work out the sine and the cosine functions. In previous videos, we worked out the inverse, sine, cosine and tangents. We did that using the vectoring mode. Now, in the vectoring mode, we compared lengths. That is, we pseudo-rotated a point around the circle, and then we compared one length to another length. And then we either rotated this point here clockwise or anti-clockwise. Now we're going to use a different chordic mode and this is called the rotation mode. Now in the rotation mode we're going to compare angles. So again we're going to rotate a point round about the circle. So this is the pseudo-rotation. But in this instance, we're no longer going to be comparing lengths. We're actually going to be comparing angles. So we will already know the value for this angle here. And we're comparing the new angle to this angle here. So in vectoring modes, we compare length. And in rotation mode, we compare angles. In vectoring mode, it allows us to work out the inverse functions. In rotation mode, it allows us to work out the functions. So let's go ahead and we'll see how we can use this rotation mode in order to work out the sine and the cosine function. So again, we have our circle in blue and we have an input vector and the input vector lies along the x-axis. And you can see that the input vector, again, has been scaled by this factor to a point 0 0.607. Now, let's say we want to start off with an angle, which we already know. So the angle is 30 degrees. So this is the angle that we have, and it's 30 degrees. And what we want to work out is the sine of 30 degrees and the cosine of 30 degrees. Now, everything here is scaled so that whenever we work through the pseudo rotations the final point here will have the hypotenuse length of one so if the length of the, of the hypotenuse is one then it means that in order to find out the sine of this angle we simply need to know this height y because the sine of the angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse and the hypotenuse here is just a value of 1. So it means that the sine of this angle here, which is in this instance 30 degrees, is going to be the y divided by r, which is just y divided by 1, which is just the y height. So we can find the sine of this angle just by finding this height here. Similarly, we can find the cosine of the angle by finding just the x length here. So I've added in the initialization values here and the output values. Now in the initialization phase we're going to start off with this vector here in pink. So it means that the length of the vector here is 0 0.607 and it's going to be our 1 upon a n which is our k factor which is approximately 0 0.607. The value for our y0 is going to be 0, which is just the height of this vector. And the initial angle z0 is going to be an angle theta. So the angle theta here we already know. So this angle here in this instance for this example is going to be 30 degrees. So let's work through the algorithm here. We are comparing the angle that we have here with this vector with the angle we have with this vector and we can see that this angle here is going to be 30 degrees this angle is going to be zero degrees so this angle here is greater than the original angle of zero degrees so if it's greater than we're going to rotate it in the anti-clockwise direction so we'll rotate that in the anti-clockwise direction by our initial angle which is 45 degrees now what we're going to do is compare this angle here in pink 
with the angle in blue, and we can see that the angle in pink is 45 degrees, the angle in blue is 30 degrees. So it means that the angle here in pink is now greater, so we're going to have to rotate it in the clockwise direction. So we rotate it then in the clockwise direction, and again we compare the angles, and we continue along this process for the rest of the iterations. So let me go ahead and I'll do that now. So the final point that we end up with here is the 0 0.864,0.5014 and the actual point is 0 0.866,0.5 so we've got an approximation here so the y value here, the 0 0.514 is the sine and the x value 0 0.864 is the cosine so the final value here, xn, which is going to be our output, is the cosine of our angle of 30 degrees, and the value for our yn is the sine of our angle of 30 degrees. And the final value that we'll have for our zn at the end of the iterations will be a value of 0. And again, we work out the value of an given this function here. So I have rewritten the algorithm out in full here. We have the actual quadratic algorithm, the initialization and the output, which is going to give us both the cosine function and the sine function. The only thing you have to be careful here is that you do the comparison correctly. So we're comparing the value of the angle which is created via the pseudo rotation to the actual angle of the input in which case at this point in the example we did the angle of theta was an angle of 30 degrees now there's one other thing that we can do here and that is that we can work out the tangent function but we're going to work out the tangent function simply by dividing the sine with the cosine so the tan of the angle theta can be given by this identity, sine theta upon cos theta. And there's a little proof here, because we know sine theta is y upon r, that is, it's going to be the, the opposite over the hypotenuse, and the cosine of the angle is going to be x upon r, which is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So whenever we multiply these out, we get y upon r times r upon x, and the r's cancel, that gives us a value of y up in x, which is just the tan of theta. So in the example that we did there, we have the tan of 30 degrees. Well, the tan of 30 degrees will be the same as the sine of 30 divided by the cosine of 30, which is just the value of our 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.866, which is equal to 0 0.57736. And we can compare this to the actual value. So if we were to go into, for example, a calculator here uh, and, and make sure you're on degrees and you can stick in tan of 30 and you can see it gives us 0 0.5735. So that means that we are now able to work out six functions using our cordic method the inverse sine, cosine and tangent, and also the sine, the cosine and the tangent. So that's all for this video. Thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.